Hello everybody and welcome, this is Roland from Gravity in Motion and in this tutorial I want to show you how to customize my 10 facts about template. It is a kinetic typography template so you have a lot of texts and a lot of titles that you can edit. You can of course change all the fonts, the colors, the texture, the whole look and I will show you how to do this now. But before we start customizing I want to give you one more advice about using this template. So before you open up the After Effects project please be aware that you have to install some fonts. So if you unzip your zip folder, you will get something like this and you can find the fonts folder. And when you open up the fonts folder, you will see that we have, let's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fonts necessary using this template correctly. So I will just open up this link and this leads you to a homepage where you can download all of these fonts. So these fonts are all free fonts. Download the fonts and then just install the files on your system and afterwards start After Effects. And then you should see something like this. And maybe you will ask why this is important. It is important because I used some elements, for example as this one here. And these elements are important for the layout of the template but they are in fact also just typography. So please install the fonts and then get started with customization. And this is exactly what we'll do now. So first of all, I want to show you how you can change all of these titles. It basically works the same with every title. So I will just do a few examples. Let's start by adding, let's say, uh, this template title here. So you probably want to explain 10 facts about something else. So let's go to our render composition. Inside the render composition, you can find all the editable layers. And we will just move down here and we will just take a look and you see that here we have the this template title and this is exactly the one I want to change so I just double click it and instead of this template let's say I want to explain 10 facts about something else so I just type in something else and now I want to change the font because I also want to have the stroke dimension here. So let's type in in our character window stroke. And you see immediately we have stroke dimension. And now I want to change the size a little bit so this lines up nicely. So let's say we make this something a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. And the else, let's make it a little bit smaller. So... like this and this is quite nice let's change this to half and we have a little bit less render time okay next title basically exactly the same you see that here you have got this text field so now you can change again all the font or all the text here so in this case we will write in something else small something else delete the this here and again you can use whatever font you want so let's say we want in this case we want to use the code light font code light decrease the size and you could of course now change everything else so something else is definitely and without any doubt totally awesome yeah perfect and in this case I want to point out you see that we have the awesome title in many different fonts so if you change the one we have got in our timeline here so double click it and just type in let's say it's awful in this case and you see that when uh, yeah when I see like when I press outside of the layer then all the others update so okay in this case I didn't make it so nice you should yeah that's better but you can see that you will not find all these layers inside the timeline and this is because some of the layers are hidden. So if you press this guy here, the unhide old button, you will see that now there are way more layers. But I want to keep it a little bit simpler for you to edit this template, so I just hide it all layers that are not important for customizing. If you want to take a closer look at the structure of the template or if you want to do some in-depth changes then don't forget you can always unhide all the layers and then you will see everything that is used creating this animation. 
but for now I will hide them again. So let's press the hide all button again and now everything is gone and we can continue customizing our texts but I think that you already know how it works so always the same choose a frame where you can see all of our text or in this case I would need some more room here and then you can choose parts or the whole title type in your text and select your font change sizes whatever you want to do so the next part is to enter some footage you see in the end of this animation you have the possibility to enter some media in fact we have three media placeholders and i thought it is quite useful if you want to show the people let's say your website your facebook site or whatever and therefore you can enter photos videos whatever so I just created a placeholder and we will replace this one now. So we will go to the media one composition. You can see that the compositions should be already open in your timeline here. If not, you will find them in the project area under media placeholders. So let's go open up media one and let's say I want to import some footage. So I go to file and import file and I just want to import my screenshot here of my homepage. And I just drag it on top of my placeholder and scale it to the right size like this and I can disable or delete the placeholder and go back to my render comp and you see that my footage is inside here if you ask yourself why this looks so strange the colors are completely different than here this leads us more or less to the next stage of customizing and this is customizing the look I applied a little bit of color correction so it has kind of a vintage look when you open up the project but of course you can stylize and change this as you want and I will show you how this works and this is pretty easy. On top of all the layers we have this green layer here called the style setup. So just select this layer and you will see there are a bunch of controls. So let's deal with the vintage look at first. So let's say you don't want your presentation to be retro and and vintage you want it to be clean so yeah here you have some options to change the look first of all you can get rid of this vintage flicker if you take a look at the video or at the preview video you will see that it is has some some flickering like you know an old uh, film projector would would generate and here you have the flicker on off checkbox and if you uncheck this the flicker is off so now, okay, we have no more flicker. So let's say you don't want to have vintage look. So just uncheck the vintage color correction. And now you see, okay, now we have the normal colors again. And then you can also turn off the vignette if you want to. And you can also turn off the texture. And this is here. So you see the texture is now a wooden texture. So if we turn it off, you know, we have no more texture. And it's going to be a really clean presentation. Uh, one more hint about textures. When you open up the texture composition, which you find inside your project area, you will see that I included four different textures. As a standard, the wood texture is active, but if you activate or deactivate this one and activate, let's say, the paper texture, or we can also take the smooth wall and we have also a grunge wall so let's take the grunge wall for now as an example then let's go back to our render comp and you see nothing happens because I disabled the texture but when I check this box now I will activate this texture and then we have some more options here so you see we have a texture brightness value so I can change this and by changing this I can change the intensity of my texture you can see now it's really getting quite dark and so you can more or less adjust the amount of grading you get through this texture and here we have also some contrast and with this contrast you can more or less um, uh, you can control how much detail of the texture is visible so when you crank this down you know more more detail will get visible and when you crank it up you will lose some detail so this is basically the texture function but for now we do not want to use a texture we want to create a very clean 
example now. So uncheck this. And now there's one more option I didn't talk about yet, and this is the colorize logo. So when we move to our last scene here, uh, we have our logo here. Uh, by the way, oh, I didn't show you how to import the logo. Okay, so let's do this now. Therefore, you just open up the logo and composition, and you can also find this inside here, but it should be already open. So move to this one, and you see that there is just my logo inside. And here you, of course, go to your file, import file, and then you open up your logo. So let's say in this case I want to change the two-line logo into the one-line logo, so I will just drag it on top and just scale it to the right size and disable the other placeholder, and now I go back to my render comp. Okay, you see now this logo is inside here. And you also see that it is colorized, and it takes over the color of your primary text. If you don't want this to happen, so if you want your logo to have the or to display the original colors, you just can check this checkbox. So, you know, disable logo colorize, and you see that you have the original colors of your logo. And of course, again, you have a text here. You can just edit the text and the font, and yeah, that's the same as always. So now we have media, we have our logo, now we want to deal with the look. So let's say in my case I really want to take over the look of my homepage for the whole template here. So I will go to my style setup again and now you see we have some text color options and background color options. And for these I will just select some values of my screenshot here. So I will take the yellow from my homepage for the text fill color and I will take, let's say, one of these grays here. Let's take this gray. No, let's take this gray for my text field color number two. And one hint for me is that you always take the same text field color two as you do for the background color one. So the same color. And now you see it's starting to change. And then we will just take another color here. I will make this a darker black. And now you see that my whole look really fits my screenshot and the whole template now represents more or less my corporate identity and also looks quite cool. Now you see we have a completely different look than we had before and it's really fast and easy to customize. And of course if you want now you could again apply some textures gave it a more dirty look. You can again apply the vintage color correction, which in fact now doesn't look so nice. So let's say you want to create your completely unique vintage look, then you just activate the vintage color correction and then you move to the second green layer here, which is called, if I just open this a little bit, vintage color correction. And you see what I did here. It is basically just a color balance and a hue and saturation effect. And now you can start applying your own values, you know, when you want to have more green there and you don't want to have so much red and whatever, you know, you can just play around and generate your own look here. Increase, decrease saturation, whatever. So fully customizable. And I will make this, I will change this for now because I think in my case, if you want to create a clean presentation, you probably should not activate the vintage look. So let's, so let's uncheck the vintage color control and let's uncheck the flicker. And now I have a clean version of my presentation. So this is it. If you have any problems with the template, just write me a mail through my VideoHive profile or through my homepage, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. I hope that you like the template, create some nice animations with it, have fun, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.